This video is brought to you by Incogni. Donald Trump just held a wild rally in Coachella, California, in which he first promoted the regressive Alien Enemies of 1798 Act. You heard that right. An act from 1798 that is racist and would allow him to kick out any migrant, even if they are a U.S. citizen. And then he got heckled from someone in the crowd and proceeded to kick that person out on camera. We have a lot to break down with 24 days to go. We have no time to waste. Make sure you drop a like. Double check to make sure you're subscribed to the Adam Mockler YouTube channel, and I guess let's jump right in with Donald Trump talking about the Alien Enemies Act, and then I'll debunk and explain why it's so dangerous. I will invoke the Alien Enemies Act of 1798 to target and dismantle every migrant criminal network operating on American soil. There's a weird buzzing sound, but when he says make America great again, he was talking about 1798 this whole time. I want a refund, as Ben Micellis says. And we will call it Operation Aurora. That's what we're going to in honor of the people that have suffered in Aurora at the hands of this horrible gang, Operation Aurora. Definitely not a fascistic plan. This article reads, Donald Trump said he would invoke the Alien Enemies Act of 1798. The rarely used law was last applied to corral immigrants of Japanese descent, mostly U.S. citizens, to internment camps during World War II. Donald Trump has long been ratcheting up his anti-immigrant rhetoric with falsehoods and hyperbole during his campaign, and today in uh, Coachella, California, Trump directly blamed his opponent, Kamala. Kamala Harris, who is of Jamaican and Indian descent, for what he characterized as an invasion. And Trump is now consistently distorting and misrepresenting data to make his case of an illegal immigrant, quote, invasion and migrant crime in America. So Donald Trump lies, lies, lies. And that's not even the craziest part. I want you guys to watch the moment that Donald Trump gets heckled while spewing falsehoods and the crowd boos for a solid minute before kicking the person out. We have to do it too big to rig. Because they are good at one thing. You know what that one thing is? Cheating. Cheating. He goes, cheating. That's true. They're, they're professional thieves. Today, California has the highest inflation, the highest taxes, the highest gas prices, the highest cost of living, the most regulations, the most expensive utilities, the most homelessness. And I hear people in the crowd starting to yell something. This person on the bottom right is looking up, wondering what's going on up there. And this is when it begins. The most crime, the most decay, and the most illegal aliens. Other than that, I think you're doing quite well, actually. Turn it up. We're not going to let Kamala Harris do to America what she did to California. We're not going to let it happen. So whether you are Democrat, Republican or independent, this election is your chance to send a message. Back home to mommy, she goes back home to mommy. Was that you, darling? And then she gets the hell knocked out of her. Her mother's a big fan of ours. You know that, right? Her father, her mother. Now, you always have that. Now, tomorrow, here's the only problem. So we have like... A hundred thousand, we have a lot. It's kind of just a tired routine, the whole go back to mommy and then mommy smack the hell out of her because mommy's a Trump fan. I don't know, again, it's the dying throes of a political provocateur, the last breaths of somebody who once had a lot of power and is now dying out, hopefully, if he loses this next election. I want to show you this senile moment from Donald Trump. We'd have a wall. We'd love to have a wall. Remember me? I said, well, and Mexico did pay for it. You know, they gave us thousands and thousands of soldiers. They paid more, remember, because there was no vehicle for that. I just want to set the record straight because I do everything. We got thousands of Mexicans patrolling our border free. That is my favorite Trump quote early in this clip when he goes, remember me? I said, wall. Have a wall. We'd love to have a wall. 
Remember me, I said wall. And- Remember me, I said wall. Kamala Wynn says, in a senile moment, Donald Trump claimed that Mexico paid for his wall. Trump barely built the wall, and it was paid for by U.S. taxpayers. Trump is losing his mind. Here is Trump talking more about Operation Aurora, his fascistic plan to deport people. Expedite removals of Trende, Aragua, and other savage gangs. There are many savage gangs. MS-13 is probably even, even meaner. They don't like using guns, they like using knives. They cut up two young girls, beautiful young girls, walking to school in Long Island. They like Long Island for some reason, a lot of them. This is terrible, but this is all Trump talks about. This is all he talks about. ICE got them out, largely got them out. But two beautiful young girls walk into school and they cut them up with knives. They cut them up into little pieces. Both of them died. They didn't want to use a gun because a gun's not painful enough. These are animals. I will invoke the Alien Enemies Act of 1798 to target and dismantle every migrant criminal network operating on American soil. I like how everyone in the crowd cheers like they know what the Alien Enemies Act of 1798 is, like they have any clue. Again, this article reads, Yes, while the U.S. undoubtedly has an illegal immigration issue, border crossing statistics that Trump cites, including claiming more than 21 million illegals coming in and 13,000 murderers on the loose, cover several administrations, including his own, going back decades and decades. In some speeches, Trump has suggested that a Kamala presidency would let in 25 million illegal immigrants a year. Fantastic numbers, which would increase the U.S. population by 100 million over the course of four years. That is not possible. That has never happened. Trump's hyper-focus on illegal immigration comes amid polls showing that he is losing his lead on the economy with cooling inflation and a booming stock market helping Harris bridge the gap. Here is another clip of Trump speaking today about beautiful computers, but God knows what. Which does work. Two things work. You know what they are? Wheels and walls. Everything else, you can have a brand new beautiful computer for that beautiful young boy of yours, and in about two weeks it's obsolete. But wheels and walls never get obsolete, and we built one hell of a wall. We were Is that an endorsement of Tim Walls right there? Here is another clip of Donald Trump talking about Chris Christie, repeatedly calling him a fat pig. You remember when a man... We're talking about this guy, Chris Christie. He went off the reservation, right? We have some people. And some guy shouts out to me, he's a fat pig, sir. (laughs) Nobody heard it but me, you know, but it was still, he said it. Sir, you should not call Chris Christie a fat pig, please. He is not a fat pig. You shouldn't, you're very rude, sir. We're going to have to throw you out if you do it again. He is not a fat pig. And you know what? The press is saying, that son of a gun. They couldn't even report this, sir, because I was defending, because you're not allowed to use the word fat. You can use any word you can use. You cannot call somebody fat. People in the crowd chanting hog. I hear I heard someone yell hog. I mean, this is Donald Trump bullying Republican Chris Christie because he's slightly dissents and isn't a MAGA sycophant. Trump is clearly doing a bit here where he's calling Chris Christie a fat pig, but in the process acting like someone else did. Either way, Trump's rallies have gone off the rails, gotten increasingly disgusting. And I just want to compare it to the way that VP Harris speaks. Very presidential. United States except Donald Trump in this election cycle. And it's just a further example of his lack of transparency that on top of his um, unwillingness to debate again, his unwillingness to uh, do an interview with 60 Minutes, which again is part of the norm of what anyone running for president of the United States does. And I think that it's obvious that his team, at least, does not want the American people to see everything about who he is. And you put that on top of even the most recent reports of General Milley. Boom, amazing interview. She hits all of the points. Donald Trump refusing to debate, refusing to do the 60 Minutes interview, which has been the precedent for decades and decades, 60, 70 years. Also, Mark Milley coming out and saying that Donald Trump is an unhinged lunatic. Here's a clip from Trump's interview today where he's talking about North Carolina undermining Biden's federal response. Despite bragging, the, the, the regime bragged how FEMA was diverting, in 2022, uh. diverting a whole bunch of funds to illegal aliens. Uh, 
through the FEMA emergency fund, we've got the White well, House on record saying Well, now they're denying everything. You know, and it, well, yeah, they've denied it. Yeah. And then they've said, you going out there claiming that this, this is actually going on, that money has been used from the FEMA emergency relief fund, that it's you, you are spreading the disinformation, the misinformation out there. What's your reaction to well, they're trying to look, cover that up? Biden's incompetent. And the only advantage is that I believe he hates her more than he hates me. Trump can barely even speak, number one. But number two, if Biden is incompetent, what does that say about Donald Trump? Because Biden has passed 10 times the amount of legislation that Trump was able to pass. And he hates me a lot, all right? But Biden's a grossly incompetent person. I believe she's worse. And it took him a couple of days to think of that one. But here's what's really bad. They got hit with a very bad hurricane, especially North Carolina and parts of Georgia. This dude can barely speak. Can you guys hear this? But North Carolina really got hit. I'll tell you what, those people should never vote for a Democrat. They should never vote for the candidates who undermine climate change consistently. I have one final clip of Donald today? Trump at his rally as his fans chant Elon. And you know where he is today? He's campaigning in Pennsylvania for me. That's how good. He feels it's so important. And I really think we won't have a country left. Elon, oh, he'll be I've pointed this out many times, but if any Democrat did what Elon Musk was doing, if any Democratic billionaire did that, it would be game over. Imagine if George Soros bought a headquarters in Pennsylvania, bought the largest social media platform like Twitter or Facebook, used that to boost Kamala Harris, paid people $47 to promote Kamala Harris, it would be game over. This article is very important because it shows Elon Musk's intentional scheme to win Pennsylvania for Trump. This reads, Elon Musk is obsessed with delivering Pennsylvania for Donald Trump, here's what he's doing. From setting up a war room in Pittsburgh to giving financial incentives for swing state voters, Elon Musk is relentlessly campaigning for Donald Trump. In what was said to be Elon Musk's very first time at a Trump rally, the ex-CEO jumped for joy on stage wearing a dark MAGA hat before delivering a tactical message, quote, register to vote. But that was just the tip of Musk's involvement in the 2024 Pennsylvania politics. Imagine George Soros or any billionaire getting this involved involved and Republicans don't even care. Conspiracy theorists weirdly don't point out that he wants to put a chip in people's brains. Could you imagine if George Soros had a program to put chips in people's brains? I'm sorry, but Republicans would never forget it. In a Pittsburgh war room, Musk has surrounded himself with lawyers, PR pros, canvassing experts, and other allies attempting to apply business and entrepreneurial chops to operations as November 5th approaches. He has many, many tactics, including $47 payments to people who register to vote including this war room, including an entire pack where he's going door knocking. He's raising money personally. Let me know what you guys think about it in the comment section below. I love to hear from you guys. Make sure you drop a like, make sure you comment some blue hearts. Have a great rest of your night and peace out. I want to give a quick shout out to the sponsor that made this video possible. A special thank you to Incogni because for a while there, I was being overwhelmed by spam calls during every second of the day. And weirdly enough, the more my channel grows, the more spam calls and emails I get. It. And now I'm even getting signed up for weird MAGA newsletters that I've never heard of. So I think someone's messing with me at this point, but it became clear that unsubscribing from all of these junk feeds on my own was impossible. In fact, our information, your information is being traded by hundreds of data brokers, making it a massive, complex industry that is impossible to navigate alone. And that is where today's sponsor, Incogni, comes in. Incogni handles the hard work for you. They reach out to data brokers to get your information removed and they manage any complications along the way. So with the yearly subscription, they keep monitoring your data to ensure you stay off their list. And Cogni has already sent out 204 requests on my behalf, and I've been removed from 95 lists. And I swear, the amount of spam calls that I've gotten has been cut in half. I was on 95 lists, probably over 100 lists, and that explains why my inbox is full, why I keep getting spam calls. So the satisfaction of fighting back against the shadowy industry is incredible. Incredible. Visit incogni.com and use the code Mockler, M O C K L E R. Check the link in the description. You get 60% off to support the channel. That's code Mockler. Take advantage of this offer. Thanks to Incogni. Thanks to you guys.